Thank you. I, I want to ask you a couple of questions on Gaza, but first I wanted to ask you about what the Israelis did today, demolished a, a house for Fakhri uh, Abu Diab. He's uh, an activist uh, against demolition to make, basically make room for a biblical theme park. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, we condemn the demolition of Fakhri Abu Diab's home. Uh, he is a community leader in East yeah. Jerusalem. Uh, we believe that demolition not only obviously damages uh, his home and his family and the lives that they have built there, but the entire community who live in fear that their homes may be next. Um, this yeah. has been their family home for mm -hmm. generations. Uh, part of the structure dates back to before 1967. He has been an outspoken community leader, including against demolitions, and now his family has been displaced. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, wanted, I, I would also like to reiterate that the impact of these demolitions, this is obviously not the first, goes beyond just the impact on this individual family. These acts obstruct efforts to advance a, a durable and lasting peace, peace and security that would benefit not just Palestinians, but Israelis. They damage uh, Israel's standing in the world, and they make it ultimately um, more difficult for us to accomplish all of the things we are trying to accomplish that would ultimately be in the interest of the Israeli people, and so we condemn them and will urge them, uh, continue to urge uh, that they not continue. Well, you know, Silwan is really adjacent to my neighborhood, so I know I know the, the area. I know how many people have been, have lost their homes, how many homes have been demolished. But the Israelis seem to have, you know, a, a methodical plan for going forward. I know that you condemn, but do you do you condemn saying what, or else, for instance? So if you, you you must stop. Listen, you must. They should not demolish anybody's home. Not even for, you know, as a form of collective punishment if someone has done something from the household. Right? So we condemn them, and let me tell you what we are offering as an alternative. So the Secretary has made clear that after conversations with others in the region, that there is a path forward, an alternative path to the one that, that um, uh, Israel has pursued to date to provide lasting peace and security for Israel, and it would include the establishment of two states. Um, and we will continue to pursue that path. And we have made clear, and other countries in the region, including Saudi Arabia, have made clear that there are enormous benefits on offer for the Israeli people should they pursue that path, including uh, uh, in further integration with the region, including security guarantees. And so when it comes to all of these types of issues, what we will continue to lay out is the vision that we think is a better path, as I said, not just for the Palestinian people, but ultimately that provides greater security benefits for the Israeli people as well. Now, on the looming you know, or the expected attack on Rafah, I know that uh, the president, the Secretary of State, you from this podium many times overwarned against such a, you know, such a, a storming uh, of Rafah. But on the other hand, I mean, one reads reports and so on that, okay, by not doing anything or by not saying that there will be consequences if you do this. You're basically green lighting, you're giving a green light to the Israelis to go ahead. I mean, you know, we don't, we don't like it, but we're not gonna do anything about it. I think though it would be a significant misinterpretation of uh, what we have said. We have made quite clear, both publicly and privately, that we cannot support uh, any military uh, operation in Rafa until such time as Israel has developed a humanitarian plan that can be executed and that they have executed such a plan. So I know people like to jump ahead far into the process and talk about what ifs, but we're not at the what if stage right now. We are at the making very clear to Israel what we expect stage. And we have seen the government of Israel ask the military for such a plan. We haven't seen that plan yet. We don't know what it will contain. We don't know if it will be uh, uh, executable, as we have said. So we will wait before offering any prejudgments about what will or may or might or might not happen. We're going to wait to see what that plan looks like and then engage directly with the government of Israel about it. So you're saying, yeah, you can do this with the caveat <clears throat> that you have to make sure that the population, the civilian population is not harmed or somehow moves from place to place. Now, remember, these these people have already been moved there. They've been, uh, you know, instructed by the Israelis to go through. You don't have to tell me, remember, I said that myself from well, the podium. I, I remember, but this is the thing. I mean, it's, it's deja vu, you know, all over again. Which to, is why to, we have made to, clear to, that there has to, to be a plan. Be there, Look, know, there, are, there, over again. there are Hamas, uh, there are, as I've said yesterday, there are two things that are true in this situation, right? Yeah. One, that there are Hamas battalions 
that operate in Rafah, that exist in Rafah, that continue to pose a threat to the national security of Israel. Hamas battalions, part of an organization that attacked Israel, and it's made clear they want to continue to attack Israel. At the same time, so, so I'd say as a, as a first matter, of course, Israel has the right to take military action against those Hamas battalions that pose a threat to it. At the same time, they have an obligation to make sure that they only do so in a way that puts civilian protection first. And that is what we have made clear to them. And so we will see the plan that they will develop. And I will wait and pass judgment until we see that. Thank you.